Hello, I'm Jared Taylor with American Renaissance. These videos are not being promoted in the normal way. So if you like them, send them to your friends or send them to people you just want to irritate. For years, lefties have complained that the National Hockey League is too white. Here are typical headlines. The racist culture of Canadian hockey. The problem with U.S. hockey, racial diversity. What they mean is not enough diversity. And hockey has long been about white machismo. Can the NHL change that? Well, just this week, the Wall Street Journal jumped on the bandwagon with what could be the harshest headline of all. Diversify or die. The National Hockey League has a demography problem. The league has been talking to William Frey, a demographer at Brookings Institute, who makes a good living telling folks that white people are on their way out. He spooked the league when he explained that 40% of Americans are already non-white and that non-whites will soon be the majority. And so, as a recent NHL policy paper puts it, now, more than ever, hockey must focus on the drastic demographic and cultural change that is coming. Yep, demography changes everything. I wonder when the Republicans will figure that out. But the reasoning here is that a sport will die if the players don't look like the country. Well, if that's true, why didn't professional basketball die long ago? 81% of the players are black in a country that's only 13% black. Why doesn't basketball have to diversify or die? The National Football League is 70% black. Why isn't William Frey pestering the teams to hire more white guys? Well, I'll tell you why. Because anything that's white, like professional hockey, or classical music, or bird watching, or the state of Maine, is by definition no good and has to change. Diversity is just a way of saying too many white people. That's why hockey, which is white, has to diversify or die. But basketball is wonderful because there are practically no whites left. There is a group called the Institute for Diversity and Ethics in Sport that says this explicitly. It gives every professional league a grade for diversity. As it noted, in an ethnic breakdown of sports, NBA takes lead for most diverse. It's practically all black but gets top marks for diversity. That's because diversity means having as few whites as possible. And that's why Major League Baseball, which you actually could call diverse, gets a lower grade. Only 58% of the players are white, so whites are underrepresented. But that's not good enough. If baseball wants a better diversity score, it needs to get rid of those white players and look more like basketball. Well, to understand diversity, let us turn to the New York Times. In June, the paper heaped scorn on Canadian hockey as boringly white and held up the Toronto Raptors basketball team as more like what Canada truly deserves. It dug up an immigrant to say just what the paper wanted to hear. You only see white people playing hockey, said Andrew Guyen, 19, whose parents came to Toronto from Vietnam. But basketball is more like what the nation is like. How much did they have to pay Andrew Guyen to say something that stupid? Here are the Toronto Raptors. There are 18 men on the team. Only two are white. The guy in the front row is a light-skinned black. Canada is 3.4% black and 73% white. Does Andrew Guyen think he's living in Nigeria? Even famously diverse Toronto, where Andrew lives, is still about half white and only 9% black. It doesn't look like the Raptors. And just this week, the Times was back to complaining about how miserably white Canadian hockey is and how marvelously representative the Raptors are. The Times gloried in how the team's racial, cultural, and socioeconomic diversity reflected the country as a whole. Here's another picture of the Raptors. Does even the Times believe its own baloney? Yes, because diversity means as few whites as possible. It's not as though the NHL is all white. Pro hockey got its first black player, Willie O'Ree, back in 1958. He wasn't much of a player, but he's in the Hockey Hall of Fame because he was the first black 
And every year, the NHL gives out the Willie O'Ree Community Hero Award. There are plans to grant him the Congressional Gold Medal in the U.S. You know who got the first one? George Washington. Well, last season, the NHL had 33 black players. How many black kids grow up even playing hockey? The league is hunting high and low for these unicorns, and the NHL is straining every muscle to end its shameful homogeneity. It has a Hockey is for Everyone program to persuade even the most unlikely people to play hockey. It's going for Asians, black history, gay pride, girls and women. But since the only diversity that really counts is non-whites, this month, Hockey Commissioner Gary Bettman ordered mandatory diversity training for all coaches and personnel. And they'll get it every year, just in case they forgot. The NHL celebrates Black History Month. As the very lefty Guardian newspaper noted, the league has departed from its previous tone deafness around Black History Month with a full slate of relevant programming. It was tone deaf on Black History? Could someone explain to me why professional hockey should care at all about Black History Month? Well, now it's got a full slate of videos of blacks talking about, and I quote, racism, breaking down barriers in hockey, and personal stories. The league even has a mobile black history museum that travels all around the country. American legacy, know your history. Pro football and pro basketball don't even do that. The whiter you are, the more you have to celebrate black history, I guess. So there you have it. Hockey has got to diversify or die. Basketball and football can stay just as black as they like. Baseball is still suspiciously white. You see, sports are like everything else. Too many whites is just plain wrong. And you can never have too many people of color, especially blacks. The message is clear, isn't it? White people are like an infestation, like termites or bedbugs, and the quicker they can be disposed of, the better. And so pretty soon, what I'm about to do could be against the law. So I'll say it while I can. Have a white Christmas. Thanks for watching. Please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, take a look at our podcast channel. That's Amran Podcasts at YouTube. And also please visit our website. That's at amren.com. A-M-R-E-N dot com.